Hello out there to you no-name Cinema Society fans. It is I, Jonathan Betzler, and I welcome you to this very special uh, review here of a, a solo review uh, with just me talking about American Assassin. Um, those of you who watch the vlogs uh, know that I went to the uh, San Diego last night to see uh, Padre Rocky's super fun. Um, so uh, this is a nog here. I'm back here in Los Angeles. And uh, before I go back to New York at the, uh, in the beginning of October, a couple of weeks here in LA. Um, and so thanks very much. And I want to also thank uh, Lionsgate uh, for inviting me to a sneak preview of American Assassin. And, and the agreement was I would do a review uh, as a result. Um, I don't have pictures of, uh, from getting, they made us turn in our phones. So I couldn't take any photos of me at the Chinese theater for the, for the premiere. It was a cool night. I want to thank Lionsgate for uh, including me in that. Um, so let me get by myself. Self, no one introduced, so let me just get straight to uh, the summary um, of this uh, movie adaptation of book uh, from Vince Flynn, uh, best-selling author Vince Flynn. Mitch Rapp is on a vacation with his fiance when the beach they're on is mercilessly attacked by terrorists, leading to the death of Mitch's beloved. Uh, Mitch then dedicates his life to single-handedly taking down terrorists, which leads to him getting recruited by the government and sent on real life missions. That is the basic premise of American Assassin. Again, I want to thank Lionsgate for inviting me, but they wanted me to do a review, but I can't give a false review just because they invited me. The movie's no good. Um, it is dry, humorless, and uninteresting. Um, I, I, and I even feel uncomfortable about the shameless appeal to uh, Trump's fan base uh, with this movie. Um, Davey, uh, you couldn't participate in this with me, but he did manage to see it. Uh, and he also didn't like it, um, for what it's worth. And I'll be, he t gave me some uh, notes to give to you uh, that I'll be saying throughout, you know, as, of course, this is very brief, hopefully very brief review. The primary culprit with the, with the, with the issue with American Assassin is the screenplay. That's where it all sort of dies, uh, ends and ends with the screenplay. And I think the key, everything else sort of fails because of is the characterization of Mitch himself, at least in presented by the screenplay. He's unestablished and underexplored overall, and therefore he, it's impossible to really care about or root for him. I think we needed more time with him if we were gonna care about him and his tragedy. More time before the tragedy, or alternatively, we could have avoided the tragedy altogether and then seen him afterwards and, and seen how the tragedy haunted him, that would have been another option altogether, potentially a more interesting one. If you're gonna show us that opening scene, we were also denied his transition to superhero ninja, a day, a ninja's Davies word. Davy asked for a training montage or of something of that nature that would have led, but it just basically jumps several years to him being uh, a solo vigilante, cold-blooded uh, kind of dude. Um, but w without seeing him work towards that, or uh, having spending more, more time with his fiance, get to know her. So we don't care w that much when she's killed. I'm sorry. You know, you got to establish these characters. That's the foundation of the movie. W without a solid foundation, everything else sort of crumbles around it. Speaking of that opening scene, it was highly contrived. Two major life events thrown together for expositional purposes is very sloppy screenwriting. Either give us more time with them or less. Like that, the amount of time they had served no purpose, um, or a forced purpose I really, is really what I should say. Uh, the villain of the movie is also kind of contrived in how they relate to the other characters. They're a little too incestual in this movie. Granted, that's probably part of the Vince Flynn book, not so much on the screenwriters, still a bump for me. The plot is never really interesting, also potentially an issue with the book. There is a, a good twist that happens, but then it gets quickly untwisted. They're like, oh, we got you here, psych! Not really, that, that wasn't really a twist. So it, it was almost disappointing, like, oh, that was interesting, that twist, but it's not real. I'm, I'm trying to be vague because I don't want to give too much away. Quick segue to performances. Um, um, Dylan O'Brien, who's so charismatic in Maze Runner, is anything but here. Granted, the screenplay doesn't give him much, but especially in his case, I do feel like he could have helped more with personality, likability. And I understand he, he's supposed to be brooding, rage-filled kind of guy, but even his rage was so subdued that it was really hard to, like, care about him at all. Again, the screenplay is the primary issue to blame, but I do think Dylan O'Brien could have done more. Uh, I'm not sure Santa Lathan could have done more, who also has had a career of great performances, notably Love and Basketball, and I saw her on stage in Central Park in Measure for Measure. She was outstanding. She really wouldn't hear. I don't know if she could have brought more to the table. She 
dealt with what she had. The only one that really tried to elevate the screenplay is Michael Keaton. And really, it's a saving grace of the movie. And Davey made that point as well. He's the only real watchable one. Um, he brings energy intensity. He's the only real source of entertainment. It seems like he can do no wrong these days. Taylor Kitsch is also in the movie. And you know you're in trouble with your movie if Taylor Kitsch gives one of the better performances. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to say Taylor Kitsch is good in this movie. He's just not that bad. And so on the Taylor Kitsch scale... Direction, I don't know much to say about Michael Quace's direction. Um, the, uh, it, was, it was a pretty boring movie, ultimately. Uh, and so he could have done something there. The action sequences don't really add any fun or excitement. It's mostly cookie cutter kind of stuff. I will say that the last 10 minutes are the only thing that really had any genuine sense of tension. Dave got the, the bad CGI as well. Not much good things to say about American Assassin, unfortunately. Lionsgate, keep inviting me, honestly. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I love to come to these screenings, but uh, you know, I, I gotta be honest with my reviews and um, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's all I can be. Otherwise, the viewers aren't gonna trust me and, and that's the deal, uh, as it were. So sorry about that, but uh, you know, fun night. Um, next up, we're going to have a, we are going to have a real show, real ish. Um, and, uh, cause it'll just be me and Davey on the next show. Um, and that's, we're going to do the Kingsman, the golden circle. And that's going to be Thursday, September 28th. I know we had talked about doing the film Gotti, but the Lionsgate actually did not release it on the date. So we had to push and then we we're going to do the film mother, but schedule changed. So we had to push it. And so we will be back Thursday, September 28th with the Kingsman, the golden circle. J money will be back. Uh, on October 2nd with our Indie Spotlight. Um, our classic movie discussion will be on uh, Thursday, October 5th, and then on Monday, October 9th. Who needs Monday Night Football? We can watch our sound off. And it's going to be a very special sound off. We've got a major announcement, uh, and I think you'll really enjoy that. All that's coming up in the next, you know, two plus weeks here on the No Name Cinema Society. So thank you very much for saying, you know, tuning in for this very brief review uh keep watching vlog. Uh, watch old episodes too and subscribe to the channel that's the thing you really got to do um anyway uh that is all i have to say right now uh in the meantime uh, i'm over and out